Boys and Girls Club of Hamilton. I'm back again with you today to talk about what to do in case of an emergency. Now this information is super super important and you should put it into your brain and remember it forever but it's even more important now that you're spending lots and lots of time at home just like you should be so let's get started but before we do I need everyone to turn their listening ears on and put their thinking caps on. All right let's go. Okay friends, so as you can see I have a nice big paper in front of me, but you don't need one. Remember I said all we needed were our listening ears and our thinking caps, but this just might help some of our friends who learn better through reading or through seeing to follow along. Alright, so to get started, what I need everyone to do is take a few seconds and brainstorm or think, think, think really hard about what is in an emergency and what are some examples, and then we'll be right back. So now that you've had a few seconds to brainstorm and think really hard about those two questions, what is an emergency and what are some examples of an emergency, we're going to go over it together. So an emergency is just when someone needs help right away because they may be hurt or in immediate danger. And so I'm going to share with you my five examples of what an emergency could be, but I would encourage you to share your examples with me on Facebook at Boys and Girls Clubs of Hamilton or on Instagram at BGC Hamilton. Okay, so number one would be fire. So if there's a fire, that's a pretty big deal. We're probably going to need some extra help to deal with that. So that would be in an emergency. Number two is if somebody is unconscious. And I know that's a really big word, but all that it means is it's just like as if somebody was sleeping. However, when you try to wake them up by calling their name or tapping on the floor beside them or pinching their earlobe, they don't respond and they don't wake up. Okay, so then we need to get some extra help for that one. Number three would be medical distress. And I know this can seem like a little bit of a big word as well, but it's very simple. And all that it means is that somebody's not feeling well and it's becoming a big problem. So in this situation, maybe they are having trouble with their heart. It's not feeling right or it's not beating just how it normally would. Or maybe they're having a hard time breathing or they're bleeding a lot. Any of those types of things would be medical distress. All right. Example number four would be a car accident. And this could be with multiple cars or just one car. And the reason that this would be an emergency is because people could potentially be hurt or there could be issues with the car that make it a very dangerous situation for people. Okay, and then the last example I have would be crime. And so what crime is, is just if people aren't following the rules that we have, and that we have those rules to help keep us safe and healthy and happy, and if people aren't following those, that's called a crime. Okay friends, I'm very, very proud of you for following along and brainstorming and really using your, your thinking caps to help you figure out what an emergency is and what some examples are. Now I want you to just think a little bit more about what number do we call if we experience any of these five examples that we talked about or any of the examples you guys brainstormed. And I know you guys know this one, so I'm going to give you a couple seconds and on the count of three, we're going to shout out that number that we call together. Are you ready? One, two, three. 911. Awesome. You guys nailed it. Great job. All right. And if we were to call 911, who are we able to get in contact with there? I know you guys know this one too. There's three different types of people that are able to help us, and they are the police, the fire department, and the ambulances or the paramedics. Great job. Okay, awesome. So now that we know what number to call and who we're able to contact when we call that number, we're going to talk a little bit about what types of information and what questions that person who answers the phone called the dispatcher might ask us. So we got to think of our W words. So we have who. So they might be wondering, who do we need? Do we need the ambulance? Do we need the fire truck? Do we need a police officer? They might be wondering who is hurt. They might be asking us what happened or what's the matter with the person. And they will definitely be asking us where. Where are you and where is the person injured if they're injured? All right, so together now we're going to go over what to do and what you would say an example if I call 911, I say. So we're going to pretend that I am at the Boys and Girls Club of Hamilton and there's a fire. So if I call 911, I would say, my name is, and you guys shout out the answer? Yeah, my name is Heather. Awesome. And then the next thing I'm going to make sure I tell them is I am at, and where am I? Well, I would be at 
my favorite place, the Boys and Girls Club of Hamilton. And then the address there, well, that address is 45 Ellis Avenue. And the emergency I need help with is, well, we said that there would be a pretend fire there. So I would tell them there's a fire. And so it's really important, and I know, I know we just did a pretend situation, but it's really, really important that we only call 911 if there is a real situation. All right, great work, guys. So now we're just gonna do a few little quiz questions just to see if you remember all of the important information before I let you go. All right, number one, what number do you call? And if there's an emergency, do you call 911? Do you call 999 or do you call 000? All right, I'm going to count to three, and then I'm going to circle that right answer. One, two, three. Shout it out. Good. Nine, one, one. All right, number two. When should you call 911? Should you call if your dishwasher leaks, if there's a fire, or if you need a Band-Aid? And I want you to think really hard about this one because, remember, we're talking about a big emergency. All right, think hard. Three, two, one. Good, if you shouted out fire, that's the right answer. All right, last question, and this one's a little bit tricky because there could be more than one right answer. All right, what types of information should you tell a dispatcher? So that's the person who answers when you call 911, remember? So do we wanna tell them our name? Do we wanna tell them the location? Or do we wanna tell them if we're hungry for dinner? Think hard, three, two, one. Awesome, so we wanna make sure we tell them the name of us and the person who's hurt if we're able to, if anyone's hurt, and also the location, meaning where are we? Are we at the Boys and Girls Club? Are we at home where we should be right now? Those are lots of things to think about. Thank you so much everyone for joining in with me today for our aquatics programming, learning about what an emergency is, who to call and how to call 911. I'm so glad I got to share that very important information with you. I can't wait to see you on Tuesday and I hope you have a great weekend.